What's up, YouTube? What is up, everybody? Today is February 26th, 2024, and in this live stream, I'm going to talk about how to start a bookkeeping business, specifically in 2024. And I'll be honest with you, I have been absolutely swamped. Literally from January 1st until today, I have just been absolutely swamped. If you already have your own bookkeeping business, chances are you've been pretty busy. But if you don't have any clients, that's okay because now is the perfect time to start a bookkeeping business because it's tax season. Right now, so many people are going to be reaching out to people just like you, just like us, and they're going to be asking for bookkeeping because they need to file their taxes, which means they need to have a profit and loss and a balance sheet, which means they need to have bookkeeping done for all of 2023. And chances are the majority of business owners reaching out to you right now probably don't have a bookkeeper in place for 2023. So right now, literally the perfect time to start a bookkeeping business. Now, if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the chat. I will do my best to answer everybody's questions. And if you guys can hear me, let me know if you can hear me. If you can't hear me or if you can't see me, also please let me know that you can't hear me or see me. I have a new setup. I just moved out of my old office and now I am in my home office. I have my handy dandy little Rode microphone arm right here. So hopefully the sound is okay. Hopefully you all can hear me. So like I was saying right now, February is literally the perfect time to start and grow a bookkeeping business. Last year, I got five new clients in February alone. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been kind of nervous February 2024 because I haven't gotten a single new client in February of 2024, which kind of makes me nervous because I got five new clients last year. But it's, it's a good learning opportunity for me and my business. I've been doing this for three years. So I've been around a couple years now. I've seen the ups and downs of being a business owner, especially a bookkeeping business owner. There are going to be busy seasons. There are going to be slow seasons. And it seems to happen almost sporadically. Like some months are crazy busy. Other months are pretty slow. And that's okay. That is one of the struggles of being an entrepreneur, of being a business owner. It's not always even, like it's not always the same amount of work every single month. Some months are gonna be crazy busy, other months are not gonna be not so busy. So if you guys have any questions, I have 50, more than 50, it comes and go, it goes up and down, but I've got like 50-ish bookkeeping clients right now. I've been doing this for three years and what I tell everybody, I started my bookkeeping business with no experience. So I make a ton of videos on YouTube as you guys already know and the whole idea behind what I tell you guys is that you can start a bookkeeping business with no experience and I know that you can do it because I literally did it three years ago. I had no college degree relevant to accounting. I had no work experience. I didn't have any certifications other than the QuickBooks Online certified pro advisor. That's the only certification I had. And I actually started my bookkeeping business in October. So like fall, winter is the perfect time to start a bookkeeping business. So if you're on the fence about starting a bookkeeping business, let me just reassure you now is literally the perfect time. You just got to put yourself out there, start creating social media marketing content and start telling people, hey, look at me, I'm a bookkeeper, let me know if you ever need help with your QuickBooks. Like that is, I know, like, I, so my whole, my whole theme is to keep it simple. So everything I tell you guys, like it's so simple, it's, you know, anybody can do it, and that's true. But if you've ever heard me, if you've ever heard me say this, starting a bookkeeping business is a four step process. And I like to keep things simple. So everything that I talk about is usually three or four steps. But listen, the key here, starting a bookkeeping business, four step process. And I'm sure you guys have heard me say this a million times, but I just want to hammer home one quick point and then I'll get to the the questions. I see that I've already got a ton of questions in the comments. So Okay, so starting the bookkeeping business, four-step process. First step, learn QuickBooks and bookkeeping. 
Easiest step, first step, get it over with. Second step, sales and marketing. That's the hardest step. Third step, deliver high quality customer service. That's the most important step. And then step number four is you have to work really, really hard. And that is what is so often overlooked. And honestly, when I was trying to start my bookkeeping business, I feel like so many people were telling me that it's gonna be easy. And like, I was like, oh, cool, like, that's fine. Like, it's good. if it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be hard, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But I almost feel like some people are trying to trick other people out there by like selling them this fantasy world that it's going to be easy. I am here to tell you 100%, I promise you, it's actually going to be incredibly difficult. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to work really, really hard if you want to grow a successful bookkeeping business. If you want to get 10 clients and make $30,000 a year, that's not going to be too hard. Like You could probably do that in the next 12 to 18 months. But if you want to grow a bookkeeping business to where you're making $70,000 a year or a $100,000 a year or $200,000 a year or $300,000 a year, that's going to require a ton of hard work. Let me give you one, one quick analogy and then I'll get to the, the questions in the comments. So starting a bookkeeping business is a lot like walking a mile. And let me explain. So imagine if I told you to go out and walk a mile today. Most people, as long as you're physically able, that's going to be really, really simple for you, right? Like most people can go out and walk a mile. But if I tell you go out and walk a mile every single day for the next six months, that is actually incredibly difficult. I guarantee you 99% of you won't even be able to do that. The exact same concept with starting a bookkeeping business because starting and growing a bookkeeping business is all about sales and marketing. And sales and marketing is all about being consistent over a long period of time. So you need to do sales and marketing every single day for six months in order to grow your bookkeeping business. And that is the key. Like it's not, it's not complicated, but it's also not easy. So it's simple. You just got to do sales and marketing. Like it's simple, but it's really, really hard because you have to do it every single day. Okay. Now let's get to the, the questions here. Um, KR, I see you, Gabrielle Gonzalez. I can hear you. That's awesome. I can see your comments. So that's a good sign. Uh, Suzanne, Jack, I hear you. Let me know, guys, if it's too loud or too quiet. I'll, this is my first time using like this this microphone arm, so let me know if I need to speak up or or stop yelling and, and keep it down. Uh, bookkeeper Joshua, hey Zach, what's up, Joshua? Uh, let's see, Tammy, Tommy, sorry, Tommy. Is it vital, in your opinion, to be listed in Google Business? Google is giving me issues with my submission. It is service based since I don't have a physical location. So I have heard, so I started my Google My Business profile three years ago and it's it was a lot easier back then. I have heard it is pretty difficult now to get verified, but it's difficult, but it's not impossible. I strongly recommend do whatever you can to get listed on Google because I would be willing to bet if you guys are looking for a restaurant to go to or if you're looking for a new dentist or literally any other service, I'd be willing to bet one of your options would be to go to Google and look up the reviews on Google to try to find a reputable service or restaurant to go to. And with bookkeeping, it's even more so because people take their finances incredibly serious. Like it's not like you're hiring someone to come over and mow your grass. Like whoever that is, that doesn't really matter. But somebody to manage your finances, like you need to trust that person. So if you can get established on Google My Business and if you can get reviews, especially five-star reviews, that and if you can have reviews over a long period of time, that just establishes so much legitimacy for you and your business. So 1000%, I strongly recommend get a Google My Business profile and try immediately to get Google reviews. Like if you guys go to my Google My Business profile, Harrisburg Bookkeeping, I have over 100 five-star reviews. And I think that helps a lot when people are trying to decide if they wanna hire you because I think it just helps people to trust you. If, if they see over 100 five-star Google reviews, hello, like this person has probably been been in business for a while and they're probably doing something right. It's not always a guarantee, but it's a good start. So yes, do whatever you can, Tommy, to get your Google My Business profile listed, even if it means hiring a professional to help you get your profile verified, strongly recommend that. Uh, Jason De La Cruz, 
Good to see you, man. I know you've been a long time follower, so I appreciate your support. New setup sounds great. Thanks, Jason. I really do appreciate that. Uh, Peru, thank you, bro. You're welcome. I know about QuickBooks and started virtual bookkeeping services and also doing SEO on my website to get on board my first client. That's great. So when it comes to sales and marketing, there are hundreds of options out there. <clears throat> I'll name a few just to get started. You've got paid-per-click ads with Google and Facebook. That requires money. Uh, you have blogging on your website. You have search engine optimization or SEO for your website so that when people search for a bookkeeper or a tax preparer or an accountant, then you show up high in the Google search rankings. You have social media marketing. You could pay someone to do it for you or you could do it yourself. You have direct mail. You could maybe send mail to business owners through the, the old fashioned snail mail US Postal Service. You also have cold calling. So you could get a long list of phone numbers and you could call people. You have email marketing. You could get a list of email addresses. It's especially easy because every business owner has an email address. So you can do email marketing. What else can you do? You could do live networking events or you can do seminars or you could do speaking engagements or you can make tutorials on YouTube like what I do. There are, and that's just to name a few, there are hundreds of different avenues when it comes to sales and marketing. So Peru, I see that you're working on SEO and that's great. It literally doesn't matter what you do. It just matters how you do it and that it all circles back to the, the consistency and the commitment. So if you wanted to write a blog, that would be amazing. If you wrote a blog every single day for six months, I'd be willing to bet you would gain some traction. You would get some type of following. You might not get a client, which, you know, whatever. Like there is no guaranteed roadmap to success. But if you are consistent and commit and committed, you will at least be a couple steps further than where you were when you got started. So Peru, the fact that you're doing SEO, that's awesome. There is, so I, so what I tell people is I tell you that, I tell you what I did, because that's really all that I know. Like I am not teaching you guys what I learned at, through a course. I'm not teaching you what I read in a textbook, or I'm not even teaching you what somebody else taught me. The only thing that I ever teach you guys is literally what I have done that worked for my business. Because I mean, honestly, like that's really all I know. Like that's, I, I have learned everything through experience. Like I already told you guys, like I don't have a college degree in accounting. I don't have any work experience as a bookkeeper. Like, I mean, obviously, obviously I have clients, but I don't have any like legit, like W2 work experience as a bookkeeper. So literally everything I teach you guys is all from personal experience. And just real quick, real quick plug. I do have a ton of links in the description of this video. Feel free to check all of them out. There's a ton of resources. Some are free, some are paid. Check it out if you guys want. Um, let's see, go back to the questions here. Um, UP Ishara, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Let's see, hi Zach, hello. I'm a top rated bookkeeper in Upwork. I need to expand my business outside of Upwork, but faced some difficulties to do it, specifically in LinkedIn. Expect your valuable advices. So I don't know specifically what your issue is with LinkedIn or social media in general, but great opportunity for me to share with you real quick my four step strategy for social media marketing. And if you guys have any questions, I don't really want to like, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes going into it. I also have a ton of videos already on YouTube all about this strategy. If you guys have specific questions, feel free to ask me questions specifically about this four step process, but I'll just give it to you real quick. Step number one, create social media content every single day. Step number two, find prospective clients. Step number three, connect with them, whether you're following them on Instagram or connecting with them on LinkedIn or friend requesting them on Facebook. These prospective clients are business owners and you need to connect with them. And then step number four, engage with your community. So you just acquired a ton of new friends or followers or connections. Now you need to engage with them. And this is a process that happens every single day for a long period of time. So it's not something you could do really quick right now and all of a sudden you're gonna get a thousand new followers and you're gonna get five new messages in your inbox of people asking you for bookkeeping help. You are building relationships and fostering these new connections so that hopefully in three to six months, these people will end up 
hiring you as a bookkeeper. So that's my four-step social media marketing strategy. That's what's worked really well for me. That's how I got 50 clients over the past three years. So if you guys have specific questions about that strategy, feel free to ask me in the chat. I will do my best to answer any and all questions. Okay, Ruth, you, you asked, how can I get practice bookkeeping before taking on clients? I'm taking the Simply Training bookkeeping course and I don't think I'll feel prepared to take on clients when I'm done. So I learned everything through experience, through firsthand real world experience. So I became a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, which I certainly recommend all of you do that. 100% become a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, learn how to use QuickBooks online, enough that you could get started, but you're not going to be a QuickBooks expert. So I brand myself and I tell everybody I'm a bookkeeping expert and I'm a QuickBooks expert. And that's true. I've literally been doing this for three years, for 40 hours a week, for 52 weeks a year times three, 150 times 40. I don't know what that is, but it's probably getting somewhat close to that 10,000 hour mark where you can become an expert. So I don't think it's quite there yet, but it's getting close. So I do brand myself as an expert, but if you're just getting started, you're not going to be an expert, but that's okay. Guess what? I was not an expert when I got my first client either. My biggest, I have two piece of, pieces of advice for anybody who is worried about getting started because they feel like they don't have enough experience. Actually, I have three. First of all, I did it. I'm still here. I'm still alive. It's going to be fine. Like you can get started without a ton of experience and you're going to be fine. Number two is that you just need to learn as you go. Like once you get your first client, just spend hours and hours and hours inside their QuickBooks looking at things, click on every single button you can, watch YouTube videos. There's a guy named Carlos Garcia, I think that's his name. He literally has a four hour video on YouTube where he just gives you everything you need to know about QuickBooks Online. So you can watch that video or probably a better use of your time instead of spending four hours watching a full length video. Maybe as you come across problems and scenarios that you don't know what to do, just do a Google search. Like QuickBooks Online actually has a ton of tutorials that can answer almost all of your questions. At least that's been my experience. Like if I ever have a question, I usually just go to Google, look up the question, and there is usually a tutorial straight from QuickBooks showing you exactly what to do. And then my third piece of advice, no matter what happens, don't make the same mistake twice. That's it. Like as long as you can do that, you're gonna be completely fine. So you're going to make mistakes. You need to accept that. As a bookkeeper, it is kind of tough because you are dealing with people's finances. So if you do make mistakes, it can be costly and unfortunate. However, if you try to do your best and learn from your mistakes, that's all you can do. Like we're human, like you're going to make mistakes and that's okay, but just learn from your mistakes and don't make the same mistake twice. If you have a client, and if you messed up their reconciliation and they call you out on it, be honest. Be like, yep, that was totally my bad. Like, I see my mistake. I messed that up. Don't worry. Not going to happen again. But next month, if you do the exact same problem, your client's going to get really, really mad. And understandably so because you're messing up their finances. So just don't make the same mistake twice and you're going to be okay. That was a long answer. You guys are going to learn a lot of my answers are kind of long-winded. I hope that's okay. Hopefully you guys don't get too bored. All right, let's see. What's the next question? Leticia, hopefully I said that right. Hello, Zach. Are you still going to open the bookkeeping company to hire bookkeepers? So I thought about doing that last year in the fall, and I thought I would get busier than I, than I really am right now. So I was pretty busy in January, like most other bookkeepers doing 1099s and end of year close. But honestly, I'm not so busy right now that I can't handle all of the work. As soon as I get to that point, I certainly will consider hiring an independent agent, but until then, I don't have, eh, I don't really like have a plan to do that just yet. So to answer your question, no, I'm not going to do it now. I certainly would not encourage anybody to wait for me to do that. The whole goal of what I try to teach people is to start your own bookkeeping business. So certainly please do not wait for me to hire you if you're trying to get experience. Uh, Simon Bradley. Hi, I'm in the UK. 
Hey, Simon. I got ICB level two bookkeeper cert. Not really sure what that is, but I, I think I can guess. Uh, wanting to start a bookkeeping business, but I don't have any experience in finding it tough to even find employment without it. Any suggestions? So I keep it simple. That's kind of my whole motto. So my biggest suggestion would be to stick to my four step process. Learn bookkeeping in QuickBooks. It sounds like you already have that nailed down. Sales and marketing. Step number two, customer service, step number three, but that doesn't matter because you don't have a client. So so this is actually interesting. A lot of people freak out. They're like, I don't know how to do bookkeeping for my clients, but they don't have any clients. It's like, what are you even doing? Like, what are you worried about? Like you are worried about problems that you don't even have. So until you actually get a client, don't worry about customer service. Like that problem will take care of itself once you get a client. You need to focus on becoming good enough at bookkeeping and QuickBooks, and then you need to focus all of your energy on sales and marketing. So whenever I started my bookkeeping business, I had a family, I had a house, I had a wife, I had kids, I still have all of that now, by the way. But whenever I got started, I had a wife and kids, and I had a full-time job. I was actually working at Amazon on the night shift. So I would come home and sleep all day and then try to take care of my kids, and then I would go to work in the Amazon warehouse for 10 to 12 hours every single night. And I was still able to start a bookkeeping business. So the key here is that as you're getting started, you need to figure out how much time do I have during the day or during the night or on your lunch break or early in the morning before work or after work late at night. You need to figure out how much time do you have. And if you are truly trying to start a bookkeeping business, then this is where step number four really comes into play hard work. You are going to need to work really hard and also make some sacrifices. Like whenever I had my full-time job, sometimes I didn't take a lunch break. Sometimes I would be checking my Harrisburg bookkeeping email on my lunch break. On Friday night, I wasn't necessarily hanging out with my friends. I was trying to do sales and marketing. I was trying to create social media marketing content, or maybe I was trying to do bookkeeping for my clients. Like on Saturday, instead of watching football all day on Saturday and Sunday, I was trying to work on my business. So you're going to have to work really hard. You're going to have to make sacrifices. So it all comes down to how much time you have right now. If you want to quit your full-time job and start doing a bookkeeping business right away, that's fine. That means you've got eight to 10 hours every single day to do sales and marketing until you get your first client. If you don't want to quit your job, that's probably recommended. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go ahead and quit your full-time job until you have you know a couple clients. But if you want to keep your full-time job, that's also fine. You're just going to have to figure out I have 30 minutes as soon as I wake up and I have an hour every night before I go to bed. So that's 90 minutes. You can accomplish so much in 90 minutes if you just truly focus and work really hard. So just figure out what can I do every single day to start and grow my bookkeeping business and then just do that every day for the next six months. And then I guarantee you, you're going to be at least much closer to landing your first client, if not already having 10 or 15 clients after six months. So I hope that answers your question. hope that was a good suggestion for you, um, Simon Bradley. Okay, Gabriel, Gabriel Gonzalez, do you feel direct mail marketing is effective? I've never done it, so I have no idea. I don't know. Probably not. It's probably really expensive. I know it's pretty expensive to mail out flyers. And with social media now, it's the reason why I love social media for two reasons. One, it's completely free. Two, you can do it all on your own, any hour of the day, from the comfort of your own home. You can literally be laying in bed, in your pajamas, watching Netflix, pull out your cell phone, log on to Facebook, and you can like literally do social media marketing for your business from the comfort of your own bed. Like You don't even necessarily need a laptop. So that's why I am a huge advocate of social media marketing. Uh, Jason De La Cruz, do you work with any clients who use a third party payroll service? Uh, yes, like all of my clients who use payroll use a third party payroll service. So this is a good opportunity to let you guys in on a little secret. So I, like I said before, I brand myself as a bookkeeping expert. And what that means, so the, for small businesses, an accountant can do four things. They can do bookkeeping, they can do taxes, they can do payroll, or they can do CFO services. And I see a lot of people trying to do all four of those. And that's fine. That might work for you. 
But I'm a firm believer in becoming an expert and becoming really, really good at one thing. You might have heard the term niche or niche. Like if you have a niche, then that enables you to become much more efficient and much more specialized in a particular thing or industry. So I don't have a niche in the industry who I work with. So it's not like I'm only working with trucking companies or it's not like I'm only working with restaurants. Like I work with a large variety of industries, but I have a niche in two things, the software that I use. So I only use QuickBooks Online and I have a niche in the services that I provide. So I I only do bookkeeping. So I don't do payroll, I don't do taxes, and I don't do CFO services. And I have actually lost a couple clients because they're like, well, I want like I want someone to do my payroll and my bookkeeping. And that's just not me, and that's okay. But what this has enabled me to do is to become truly a QuickBooks online expert because I don't mess around with QuickBooks desktop. And also, I truly am a bookkeeping expert. So I can actually probably do bookkeeping faster than the majority of people who do taxes. I'm definitely faster than people who do payroll and probably faster than people who do CFO services. But I don't know anything about taxes, but that's fine because I don't do taxes, but I'm really, really good at bookkeeping and QuickBooks Online. So that has enabled me to grow my business. And what I mean by grow is I have 50 clients and they pay me on average $400 a month. So I'm right around $20,000 a month of recurring revenue just from my current bookkeeping clients. And that does not take into consideration any new cleanups that I might get. That also doesn't take into consideration any new clients that I might get. And my business has doubled every year. So who knows where I'll be next year. But with all that being said, I don't do payroll. All of my clients outsource their payroll to, I I use like two or three payroll companies. There's ADP. Obviously, everyone knows about ADP. There's Gusto. It's another good one. And then I have actually partnered with a couple local payroll providing companies. So there are local companies in my area. I'm sure you probably have local payroll companies who just do payroll. And these are great relationships to form because these payroll companies probably don't do bookkeeping. So you can refer all your clients to them. And then hopefully they will refer some of their clients over to you for bookkeeping. So hopefully that answers your question. So yes, I do work with clients who use the third-party payroll service. Uh, Bookkeeper Joshua, I have a new client who needs to file their 1099s for 2023. Will there be a penalty for each? I don't know. If you look up on Google right now, the IRS does say that there is a penalty for late filing 1099s. It's never happened to me, so I've only been doing this for three years. So it's never happened to me, it's never happened to one of my clients, but the IRS does say that there is a penalty for doing it. So I guess to answer your question, there could be a penalty, I don't know for sure. Uh, Hi Zach, have you ever thought to add tax services? Why yes or no, thank you. I think I just answered your question, so I'm not gonna go into that again. If you have more questions, if I didn't answer your question, let me know in the comments and I'll, and I'll answer whatever other questions, but I think I already answered that. Are you still going to do the referral program? Maybe in the future, but not right now. Maybe if I get too busy, but not right now. Uh, Giovanni Moore, how do you recommend to follow up with prospects who have shown interest? This is a great question. I have a perfect system in place for this. So there's two types of leads. I think they're called warm leads and cold leads. So a cold lead is someone who has not expressed interest. And what I'm about to tell you does not apply to cold leads. Warm leads are people who have expressed interest. Maybe you have a form on your website, they filled out your form, or maybe they sent you a message on Facebook, or maybe they sent you an email, or maybe they called you or texted you, doesn't matter how they expressed interest, but a warm lead is someone who has expressed interest. So what I do with these people, once again, everything comes down to keeping it simple. I have over 50 clients and I do not pay for a lot of expensive software. There is something called CRM software, like customer, I don't even know what it stands for. I I used to know off the top of my head, but right now I don't know what it stands for. A customer relationship management, maybe CRM client relationship management. This software 
enables you to manage your warm leads. And you probably just you know enter in their information, the last time you followed up with them, whatever. There's software out there that you can pay for. But for me, I just use Microsoft Excel. I have a spreadsheet and it's called New Clients. And this spreadsheet has two worksheets inside the spreadsheet, people who are interested and people who are no longer interested. So if you call me or email me or text me or message me on Facebook and you express interest, I am adding you to my tracker. I am saying your first basic details, first name, last name, email address, phone number, and brief notes, like what was our most recent interaction. And then I'm gonna follow up with you right away. So if you text me or email me, I'm gonna follow up with you right away. Like, like I'm gonna answer your questions. I'm gonna say, hey, yes, I can help you with your bookkeeping. Call me anytime, here's my phone number. And then I'm adding you to the tracker. And then every month I go back into the tracker and I figure out who has not turned into a client. And then I follow up with them. Like it's so super simple. Like I don't have fancy software to do this. I just manually do it with Microsoft Excel. And I follow up with them every month. So if, if you call me on February 26th, I'm going to add you to my tracker. And then I'll respond to your email. And then if you never get back to me, then on March 26th, I'm going to check my tracker and I'm going to see you called me and you did not follow up with me. So I'm going to send you another email. I'm going to be like, hey, just checking in. Are you still interested in bookkeeping? If you respond, no, thanks. I'm not interested. Cool. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to add you to the second worksheet in my Excel file to the not interested worksheet. And then I won't call you again or I won't message you. But if you don't respond to me, then April 26th, I'm going to follow up again and say, hey, are you still interested in bookkeeping? So I like to refer it as being ruthless and relentless. So if you, to my warm leads, I would never do this to a cold lead because I think this is borderline harassment and I hate when people do it to me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Like if you send me a cold message on Facebook and I don't respond, that means I'm not interested. I don't want you to, res to follow up every week until I respond. Like, please don't do that. But if somebody expresses interest in you and then you follow up with them and they don't respond, I think it's fair game to continue following up with them until they respond. No thanks, not interested. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see, where was I? Carter Phillips, fastest way to become a certified online pro advisor and what QuickBooks plan do you recommend? So the fastest way to do it is to take the test. So I did not study necessarily for the test. I just took the exam. And here's a little secret. You can open up an incognito window and you can open up a regular browser. It, it's best if you have two screens, but I did it with one screen on my laptop. And you can log in to QuickBooks in the incognito window and then log into the exam on the regular browser. And then you can scroll through the study material while you're simultaneously taking the exam. And, this, and the exam actually kind of goes in order of the study material. So by doing this, it was pretty easy. I will tell you, I failed the exam. I think you get three tries. And if you fail the exam, you have to wait 60 days until you can start over. So what I did is I failed three times taking the exam. It's actually a hard test. I'll, 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 I'll say that. I'll be honest. It is a hard test. But I failed three times. So I had to create a second email address because I didn't want to wait like two months, obviously. So I created a new email address and I started the exam process all over again. I think I passed on like my fourth try. So it is, it's no joke. It is a hard test. Let's see, Nathan Jones. I got two clients in my first 30 days. Thanks for your help, man. That makes me so happy. I am I'm really I'm proud of you. Honestly, Nathan, I'm proud of you. Good job. I hope you get two new clients every month continuing. So people tell me, people like comment on my Facebook like, "Why would you give out your secrets? Like, why are you helping your competition?" Somebody recently commented on one of my YouTube videos and they were like, "This there's no way this guy like actually has a bookkeeping business. Why would anyone give out industry secrets to his competitors honestly there are so many clients out there and like there's plenty of fish in the sea like the reason i do this to be 100 percent honest is because i genuinely enjoy 
talking about my bookkeeping business. And what started my whole YouTube channel is I was talking to my wife and she just got sick of hearing me say the same stories over and over again. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, babe, I'll spare you the details. And I just created a YouTube channel. And now I just talk about my businesses and I talk about my personal experience and I share it with whoever wants to listen. So that's the only reason why I make these videos is because I honestly, honestly enjoy doing these videos. Like it's 420 in the afternoon right now. I could be out enjoying the warm weather. I could be watching TV right now, but instead I'm talking to you guys like because I genuinely enjoy doing this. So I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, I don't know why I said all that, but oh yeah, because of Nathan Jones, because you got two new clients and like that makes me so happy. Like that's the whole reason I'm doing this is because I wish somebody was there doing this for me three years ago and I couldn't find it. So I'm on here making these videos, doing these live chats and I have a Facebook group. Like if you guys join the Facebook group, you can ask questions in the Facebook group. There's a ton of great di ton of great conversations going on, but I just love doing this. Like honestly, I enjoy doing this. So yeah, Nathan, I'm proud of you. Uh, Nick Flat. Hey Zach, what's your story behind getting into bookkeeping? And also how many hours on average do you do actual bookkeeping work? Keep up with the informative videos. Uh, Nick, I appreciate it. I'm not gonna go into my whole story, uh, how I got into bookkeeping. I'm not gonna do that right now just because there's so many questions, people actually asking bookkeeping questions. Um, but let's see, how many hours do I, so I have 50 clients. I would say on average, each client probably takes about two to three hours per month per month, which means each client's about like, like 30 to 60 minutes a week. That's about average. So 30 to 60 minutes a week. So I'm spending anywhere from 25 to 50 hours per week doing bookkeeping. Now, bookkeeping, the cycle all depends on the month. All depends on like, like the, the cycles are monthly, not yearly. Like tax preparers are super busy right now. I'm pretty busy right now because people are trying to do their taxes. So more book, I'm getting more bookkeeping clients now than normal. But the bookkeeping cycle is monthly. It's not yearly like it is for taxes. So my busy season is every single month. The first five to 10 days of every month, I'm super busy. So I will spend so much more time bookkeeping next week because that's the first week of March. So I'm closing February. Like this week, honestly, I'm not super busy because I'm not closing and reconciling accounts. But next week, I'm gonna be super, super busy. So. 25 hours a week on my slower weeks and then 40 to 50 hours a week on my busier weeks, but it fluctuates. Let's see, Sammy Hassan, what's your main marketing strategy? Do you use a sales funnel? So my main marketing strategy, my only marketing strategy is social media marketing. So I make YouTube tutorials. I do get several clients from my YouTube tutorials. So I will, like I teach people how to do QuickBooks. I teach you guys, bookkeepers, how to do QuickBooks, but I also make the tutorials for business owners. So some business owners try to do their own bookkeeping and they watch my tutorials and then they're like, ah, oh, like I still can't figure this out. Let me just hire this guy. Let me tell you a quick story. Last year, I landed a trucking company. They paid me like almost $20,000 to do two years of bookkeeping because they needed updated financial reports for an insurance audit. And the way I landed them, the, the current person, like the operations manager of the business was trying to do their books and they watched my videos to try to learn how to do their own bookkeeping. And they realized they couldn't do it. So then they scheduled a one hour consultation with me and they realized they still couldn't do it. And then they hired me and paid me $20,000 to do their bookkeeping. So essentially, Sales and marketing is all a numbers game. Like you do 100 cold calls and you hope you get one client. So essentially, there's one YouTube video out there that I made that landed this client that basically made me $20,000. But the thing here about marketing is you don't know which video is going to be your gold mine. So you need to make content every single day. You need to make content for 100 days, hoping that one person sees your content on one day and then decides to hire you. Like that's the whole idea behind sales and marketing. You just gotta be consistent every day and you have to commit to a long period of time. Like 
let, let me give you the, the going to the gym analogy real quick. Like if you try to go to the gym and work out for two weeks, that's great, but you're probably not going to get stronger. But if you go to the gym every single day for the next six months, then you're going to actually start to see results. Same thing with marketing. Like after this call, some of you guys might be super juiced up and super motivated and you might make social media marketing content the rest of the week, which is awesome. That's a good start, but you're not going to get any clients by doing marketing for one week. It's only going to work if you do it every day for the next six months. So I think your question was like, what's your main marketing strategy? I don't have a sales funnel. It just, it's all about, for me, Facebook. I create content every day. I friend request business owners and I engage with them on, on social media. Hi, Zach. How to get first client, please? Real, real simple. Real simple. Like Just marketing. Sales and marketing. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. It doesn't matter what your social media platform is. You just got to create content every day. Put yourself out there and connect with pot potential clients. Uh, Slava, you said, hi, Zach, I have over 20 years of experience. I'm a CPA. That's great. As per advice, I'm posting on Facebook for two months, but still no clients how to get them. So you're missing the point. So posting on Facebook is okay. But there's there's like, there's a whole piece of the, the puzzle and you only have one piece of the puzzle. Posting on Facebook is one thing. But I'm a numbers guy. And like, like whenever I set my goals, I like to have um, what's, what's the smart goals, smart goals. One aspect of smart goals is that they are measurable. So you need to have smart goals that are measurable. So for me, when I got started, I tried to friend request 50 business owners every single day. So like, if you just like wake up today and like, I'm going to try to do sales and marketing, like, what does that really look like for you? So for me, that looked like creating a piece of content every day, friend requesting 50 people every day, engaging with 10 friends on Facebook every single day. So by you saying that you've been creating content for two months, I'm assuming that you might be missing the mark on the other aspects, the other pieces of the puzzle. Like you need to send 50 friend requests to new business owners every single day. You need to engage. So let me give you another story. If you guys can't tell, I kind of like to compare my bookkeeping business to like real life experiences. So let's say, for example, you want to go to a networking event. Going to this networking event is synonymous with you posting on Facebook. So you post on Facebook, you go to a networking event, and you get a new haircut, you get a fresh outfit, you're looking good, you feel good, you go to the networking event, but you sit in the corner and you don't talk to anybody. That's the same concept with you creating Facebook content. Like that's fine, it looks great, it's like really good, whatever, but you're, you're missing the mark. You're not engaging with people. You're not meeting new people. That's how you're going to get clients. Go to the networking event, look good, look sharp, look fresh, go to the event, you got to shake hands, you got to talk to people, you got to build relationships. And that is the hard part. Like you could hire anybody to be a social media manager, you could hire somebody right now for probably 200 bucks a month, and they will create Facebook posts for you every day or three times a week. Like that's easy. You could outsource that. What you can't outsource is building real, genuine relationships. And that is what you have to do on a daily basis. And you do that just by being a normal person. Just talk to people. Just like comment. Like if, if one of your new Facebook friends makes a post about their business, comment on it and be like, hey, keep, keep up the good work. Hey, that's awesome. Whoa, congratulations. So happy to see you crushing it. Just like be a normal person and like build relationships. Okay, let's see. Where are we? I only have 15 more minutes, so I'm going to try to get to all these questions. This has been awesome, guys. I hope you're getting a lot of value out of this because I absolutely love just sharing my experience. So I really do truly hope that this has been a good experience for all of you. And I'm going to try to do this more often. We'll see. I say that every time, but we'll see. Okay, let's see. What are some more questions here? Uh, Ruth, you said, thanks for answering another one for you. Any recommended client niches for beginner bookkeepers? No. Okay. So I'm happy you brought that up. So like I said before, I have a niche in the, what do I have a niche in the services that I provide and the software that I work with? I don't have a niche in the clients who I work with. And let me give you a quick example. 
Imagine that you want to say, I only work with restaurants. Like, that's cool. You want to have a restaurant niche and you're just getting started. You don't have any clients. You just made a ton of Facebook marketing content relevant to restaurant owners. You just sent out a ton of friend requests to restaurant owners. That's great. But I don't want you to be so focused <clears throat> on your restaurant niche that you miss the point and that you potentially miss out on a client, especially if you're just getting started, especially if you're brand new. So let me let me be more specific here. Imagine that you have restaurant clients as your niche and then a real estate investor reaches out to you and you say, hey, sorry, nope, can't do it. I only work with restaurants. Like to me, that's incredibly silly. So if you wanna get a niche, that's fine. But in the beginning, be open, at least be open in the beginning to accepting new clients. That's just my opinion. I would like if you don't have any clients, you might as well accept the new client. And then the other thing is that you might not even know. Like you might pick restaurant owners thinking that that's going to be great, and then in 6 months you might realize like hey, restaurant owners cuz every every type of business owner like kind of has like a type of personality. Like restaurant owners are probably different than plumbers. And so you might be like, wow, like I really don't actually get along too well with restaurant owners in general. So I kind of picked this niche and here I am. I, I branded myself as a restaurant owner bookkeeper. And now all of a sudden, like I kind of realized I don't even really like restaurant owners. So that's just a specific example. But the reason I'm saying that is in the like, don't seriously, don't pick a niche in the beginning, even QuickBooks Online, like especially if you're not from America, if you're in a different country, like QuickBooks Online might not necessarily be the right software for you. Like if you're in Canada or Australia or England, like I know that sometimes like Zero and Sage might be more popular over there. So just because it works well for one person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work well for you, especially in the beginning. You need to pick your own niche and you need to discover what you enjoy doing. So for me, it was QuickBooks Online and for me, it was real estate investors. Like I really do enjoy working with real estate investors, but three years ago, I did not know that. Like if you asked me what my niche was going to be three years ago, I would not have picked real estate investors. I kind of stumbled into that area. I just kind of learned that I really enjoy working with real estate investors. So to answer your question, if you're trying to pick a niche, just in the beginning, be open to any type of client. And then once you get 10 or 20 clients, you're going to naturally lean toward one specific type of business. You're going to lean toward, maybe you start doing bookkeeping and you realize, hey, I kind of like payroll. Like maybe I'm gonna try to get some payroll clients. And that's totally fine. Like there are plenty of fish in the sea. Just don't be so narrow-minded in the beginning that you potentially miss out on an opportunity. Okay, we've got 13 minutes. Let's answer all these questions real quick. I'm only giving short answers for the rest of these 13 minutes. Um, let's see. You can call Google for the GMB verification process. Sammy, appreciate you. Thanks for your input. I hope that works. Um, Miriam, hi, Zach. What kind of insurance do I need for bookkeeping business, and do we actually need one? So for the whole first year of my bookkeeping business, I did not have insurance. But after that, I got errors and omissions insurance, E and O insurance. I have no idea if I'll ever need it. Hopefully I don't. I spent $600 for E and O insurance for the whole year. That's it. I don't have general. Li I think I do have general liability insurance. That was just kind of like bundled in with the E and O insurance. But if, if I were to restart all over again, I would probably get E and O insurance. And along the same lines, I would have a client agreement. So if you guys don't have a template, there's one for sale on my website. And it it's the exact same client agreement that I use. And will this agreement hold up in court? I have no idea. But at least, at the very least, it clearly communicates upfront all the expectations so that in six months or two years, if there are any discrepancies, at the very least, you can be like, hey, I told you in the client agreement that there's going to be a 3% fee to process credit cards. I told you in the client agreement that my scope of work only includes categorizing your transactions, reconciling your accounts, and generating your financial reports for these three checking accounts. You've added three new checking accounts, so yes, I'm going to have to increase the cost of services because you've increased the scope of work per our original agreement. So that's the whole point of having an agreement, just so that you can clearly communicate upfront expectations. Okay, where are we? 
Um, Lady J, for a husband-wife team, should I put us both in our social media content or just keep or just my husband? He will do the actual bookkeeping and I will do everything else. Socials, customer service, sales, etc. Lady J, I think you should do whatever works best for you. Like if your husband wants to be in the so that's so let me let me talk about this real quick. There are four types of social media marketing content that you can create. You can create text only. By the way, if you guys want to follow me on Facebook, I create content every single day. Feel free to follow me to get some inspiration and some motivation for what you could post on your Facebook. So you can create text only posts, which is great. You can create you can do a picture with a caption, which is also great. You can do a flyer or an infographic. I recommend go to canva.com if you don't already have it, it's free and you can create a ton of really professional looking flyers on Canva. And then finally, you can create videos. I create a short video every single day. However, I did not do that in the beginning. If you're thinking, whoa, Zach, take it easy. I'm not trying to create a video every day. Totally fine. I don't expect you to do that. For me, I kind of naturally started doing it 18 months after I started. I did not do it in the beginning when I was fresh, brand new, getting started. So what you should do is figure out what kind of content you enjoy creating, whether it's with your husband or without your husband. Like you guys don't even need to show your face. It helps. I think it helps build trust because like I was saying about Google My Business, being a financial professional working with somebody's finances and bank accounts and taxes like that is very personal and so you want your clients to trust you so i do think that getting your face out there really does help establish some trust with these complete strangers who are about to pay you hundreds of dollars to do their bookkeeping however if you're not as outgoing or if you want to remain anonymous that's fine you could certainly succeed by never putting your face out there but i think it'll help getting started Either way, as long as you are consistent with your social media content, that's all that matters. Uh, let's see, Khalid, please give some guidelines if I try to find clients through Facebook. Okay, real quick, you go to Facebook groups and I recommend choose Facebook groups that are local to your geographical region. So a lot of people ask me, how do I get clients from a different country? Like there's probably a lot of international people who ask me that, I have no idea. All of my clients live in the country that I live in. I have never got a client from a different country. So if you've been following along, the whole theme behind my advice is I only share what's worked well for me. So unfortunately, I can't help you get clients from a different country. So go to Facebook groups and join Facebook groups with that are relevant local to your geographical region. And then once you're in these Facebook groups, you can go to the people in these groups and then there's actually a tab for members with things in common. And then you can scroll down that list and you can identify business owners, entrepreneurs, people who are self-employed. Some people self-identify as founder or CEO or president of their company. Search for people with titles like that in their job title and then just friend request them. Like friend request 50 people every single day. It might take 30 minutes, but if you friend request 50 people every day in six months, I get, so I had... I had 300 Facebook friends when I got started three years ago. Now I have over 6,000 Facebook friends and they have all been strategically added by me over the past three years by sending friend requests every single day to business owners. Uh, Slava, Zach, what do you think about an idea of partnering with CPA firms to do bookkeeping for their clients? Would it help to get first clients? So there's two types of CPAs. There are owner operators, individual CPAs who are just like one man, one lady just doing their thing. And then there are firms that have multiple partners or like a full staff of accountants and bookkeepers and CPAs. I recommend stay away from the firms because chances are if they are giving you a bookkeeping client, it's probably for a really bad reason. Like if they're not taking the bookkeeping, it's probably because they're a pain in the butt client or they're it's just not a good client. So stay away from firms. I would not recommend doing that. However, owner operator, individual CPAs, 
strongly, strongly, strongly recommend find one and build a very tight relationship with that one CPA because chances are he or she does not want to do bookkeeping if they are owner operator, one man show. So they're going to want you to do their bookkeeping and chances are you're not doing taxes. So here is a perfect relationship where you can refer your taxes to them. They can refer their bookkeeping to you and then you can you can almost be like a one-stop shop for business owners because a lot of business owners just want someone to take care of their bookkeeping and taxes. They don't necessarily want to go to Billy Bob for bookkeeping and Jane Doe for taxes. Like they just want one person, one company, whatever to take care of their bookkeeping and taxes. So for me, I tell people I don't do taxes, but I partner with a CPA and we are technically two separate entities, but we are basically a partnership. He does all of the taxes for my clients. I do all of the bookkeeping for his clients and we can work together directly. Like we can communicate directly about your books and about your taxes. That way you can be as hands off as you want to be. So absolutely find a CPA owner operator and partner with them. All right, let's see. We have four more minutes and then I really got to go, but I'm going to do this again very soon in the future. So if I did not get to your question, hopefully you can tune in again to another one. Let's see. Um, uh, Z budget. Hi, Zach, a big fan here. I love your dedication and discipline. Is it person? Is it personality or your military background? I've got no idea. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, the discipline. I don't know. I guess it's just how I am. Yeah, but I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Um, Let's see, uh, no experience in any accounting or bookkeeping, so learning to transit. Um, once again, not sure what that means. Hi, Zach, any quick tips on the best way to clean up QuickBooks for a business that was literally only using invoices and receiving, okay, so how to do a cleanup. So I made a full video about this like a couple days ago or a week ago, check that out. But basically, and I just had a phone call with somebody today about how to do a full year cleanup. And that's that's kind of a hot topic right now because so many people are probably reaching out like needing bookkeeping for 2023. So to do 12 months of bookkeeping is no different than doing one month of bookkeeping. Doing one month of bookkeeping is no different than doing a week of bookkeeping. It's just 52 weeks in a year. You need to have that same mindset and it all goes back to keeping things simple. So step number one, get the QuickBooks account set up. Step number two, get all of the transactions into the QuickBooks bank feed. That's where you're going to do your work. The QuickBooks bank feed. You've got two options. You can connect, you can link the account to QuickBooks or you might need to manually import the transactions using a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Either way, you have to get the transactions into QuickBooks. There's no way anybody is doing a full year of bookkeeping by clicking that plus new button in the top left-hand corner and creating an expense every single time there's a new transaction. That's insane. It would literally take you months to do the bookkeeping. You need to import the transactions into the bank feed. And then once you have the transactions in the bank feed, doing the bookkeeping, okay, so it's not complicated but it just, it's just time consuming. So you just need to go transaction by transaction and then you just categorize the transactions and then you reconcile the accounts month by month. So start with January, 2023, reconcile the accounts, get the bank statement, get the credit card statement, reconcile the accounts and then move on to February. It's just time consuming, but it's not super complicated. Just keep things simple and just do one transaction at a time. And if you have any questions, you're going to need to communicate with the business owner. This is not a completely hands-off service. Like the business owner needs to be involved in the process of bookkeeping. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like you as the bookkeeper, you don't have all the answers. There's going to be checks. There's going to be ATM withdrawals. There's going to be unusual transactions. All we have is are the date, the bank details, and the amount. And that's not enough data to have accurate books. So if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask the business owner because there are going to be questions. You just need to be 
just do as much work as you can on your own and then ask questions once you get to a point where like, hey, I can't go any further without some answers from the business owner. All right. One more question. Uh, Zach, I've been working for my family service business as a bookkeeper for years. Do you know of any credible internships to get experience for critiquing before branching out? So I'm sure you could go to Indeed or LinkedIn and find like a bookkeeper job, bookkeeper, accounting clerk, accounts payable specialist, accounts receivable specialist. All that's going to be okay work experience, but keep in mind, Anybody who's hiring a full-time bookkeeper probably has a pretty large business and the majority of work that we do is so, like you could go and be a staff accountant for Home Depot or Amazon or Walmart, but that work experience is going to be completely irrelevant to what we do as small business bookkeepers. So just keep in mind, it's going to be really tough for you to get like actual applicable experience as a full-time bookkeeper. My best advice truthfully, honestly, my best advice for you is to do your own research, teach yourself on YouTube and through like messing around with QuickBooks on your like personal time, do your own research, do marketing, just try to get your own first client, like try to get an actual small business owner as a client. That's going to be such better experience. That's it, guys. That's all the time I have. I hope this was helpful. I have so many links in the description of this video. Check out my free course. Check out my digital downloads. Join my Facebook group. Schedule a consultation with me if you need help. I will see you all in the next video.